Hey guys, Peria from uh, Into Fly Fishing. Uh, today we're going to look at how to tie a bloodwood larva. Um, it's a very effective still water pattern um, that can be used with normal chronomid techniques. It is basically a chronomid uh, bloodworm. It's just a subspecies of, of chronomid. It's also a very effective fly when used in rivers, um, especially when you have fish feeding quite deep. A weighted version of this fly makes for a very excellent nymph pattern. Um, for the material that we're going to use, any um, scud hook would be fine. Um, this is a size 8. The curved shank is very important. For the weight, um, I'm going to be making use of a 3.5mm countersunk tungsten bead in black. You can't really see that now from this angle, but as soon as we, we um, tie the fly and get in a little bit closer, you'll be able to see it. For the thread, we'll be using red UTC 70 denier. That will also be used to build the abdomen of the fly. Tail will be made from red marabou. When wet, this stuff just moves so naturally and it gives um, so much life to this fly. Optional extra is to add a little bit of flash to the tail. Uh, here I'm just going to add a couple of fibers of red, one fiber actually of red flash on each side of the tail. This just catches a little bit of light and it reflects it in the water. Just gives it a little bit more lifelike appearance. Uh, for the ribbing, just going to make use of some black UTC um, ribbing wire. A uh, good color is gold. Uh, that's actually the more uh, traditional color. Gold, silver, or even red would be, would be good colors. I just like the contrast that the black creates. Uh, for the thorax, we'll be making use of a couple of fibers of peacock hurl. To seal the whip finish with, I'm going to be making use of Loon's water-based head cement. And that's about the materials you need for the tools to tie the fly. Any vise would be fine. Um, you don't need a rotary vise for this fly. The fly is going to be stationary the whole time, so you don't have to rotate it. That's fine. Just the vise and then a bobbin holder for your thread. Some tying scissors fine point and just your personal preference of whip finishing tool. This is a Materelli style. So that's all the materials and the tools we'll use so let's get cracking tying the fly. Okay guys uh, to tie the bloodworm larva uh, the first thing you need to do is place the bead onto the hook. So the bead has a small opening on the one side. You can see that right there. And then it's got a larger opening on the opposite side. So um, place the small opening over the point of the hook, otherwise the large opening will just cover the, the eyes. So you can just do that by sliding it over. And placing the hook into your vise, like that. You can actually turn it a little bit to give yourself a little bit more space here at the back, and you're gonna work there, like that, so that's fine. Just lock your hook in place, check it, that's fine, that's more than secure enough. Now, just lock your thread in place. And now we're just going to lock the bead in place so it doesn't run around. That you do by wrapping around and just building this wall behind the bead. Just check it every now and then. That should be fine. Good. So now just run your thread all the way back, building a nice thread base. To about there. Um, obviously with a scud hook, you can't really leave the, um, the thread you can't build the thread base only up to the point where it would intercept with the bob of the hook, otherwise you would be only left with 
like a very short section of the body. So uh, my reference point is always good to have a reference point so that you have consistency in your in your tying. So I wrap, wrap the thread back up to a point where if I leave my thread hanging freely, it would hang just inside the bend of the hook. Leave your thread hanging there and remove a couple of fibers of marabou. Um, if you're tying large flies, you can make use of this big thuft at the top. This is going to be a little bit too much. I'm also trying to work quite sparingly with this material um, so I can get many flies out of it, even though it's not that expensive, but it's just no need to waste, right? So I'm just going to cut out about that much, pinch it, pull out any loose fibers, then just make another cut to align all the fibers. Forward. I have that. Place it in place like that. Just with a couple of loose wraps first, lock it in place and then secure it in place. At this stage, it's a very long tail, but we'll sort that out now. Now run your thread forward and cover up all that marabou fibers you want to use all those fibers to build a little bit of bulk for the body. Just gonna cut off a little bit here, like that. Uh, because you'll only be creating a thread body. If you don't want to use a thread body, uh, that's fine. If you, if you have red floss, that would work as well. Right, so now I run my thread all the way to the front of the fly. To sort out this tail, the tail should be slightly shorter than the body, shorter or the same length of the body of the abdomen and thorax of the fly. So with that in mind, just pinch it the same length, like there, and then pinch at the same point and then just tear it off, like that. That's fine. Right, now we're going to cut off one fiber from your red flashaboo, flash whatever you want to choose, and fold it in half. I actually advanced my thread a little bit too far forward, so I'm just going to take it back to the half point. When you folded your flash in half, you have a loop that and then just pull the loop tight, slip it over, pull up, while pulling it in the upward direction just lock it in place with your thread and then start pulling it back and now run your thread all the way back to the base. Just before you reach the base make sure to split the two fibers on either side of the tail that to flash fibers and while pulling them or keeping tension on them just wrap your thread to the base of the tail like that now you can take your scissors and just cut the fibers about the same length as the tail like that now move your thread all the way forward, break or cut a section off from your ribbing material and place it right up against that little dam or wall that you built to keep the bead secure. Now secure the ribbing material with your thread and by while running your thread back by pulling the ribbing material tight just manipulate it so that it stays on the side of the hook shank you can do this by pulling it up pulling it down up to the base of the tail again and now just build the final abdomen for the fly 
thread, just going to run it back and forth a couple of times. Like that, that should be fine. Leave your thread where you want to start the thorax. So the thorax <coughs> forms one third of the body, of the total body length, and the abdomen makes up two thirds of the body length. In this case, the body of the thorax starts right behind the eye of the hook. So the thorax would include the bead and the peacock roll section we're going to play, put in place. So keep that in mind. So at, right at that point where we left it, maybe a little bit back, that's about a third of the body length point. So now with widely spaced wraps, wrap your ribbing around the hook shank to create a nice segmented body. And once you reach the thread, you just secure it. Cut off the excess. Okay. Now take a couple of fibers from your peacock hurl, pinch the tips together like that. You'll see that they are slightly misaligned, so I just cut them so that they're aligned. And then I'll secure them in place from right behind the bead. And then I run back until where I want to end the thorax, right there. This just helps build a little bit more bulk to the thorax. Move your thread forward to just behind the bead and then Create your peacock or thorax by wrapping it around. Once you reach the bead, just do one or two wraps over each other and secure it in place with the thread. Cut off your the excess material and do two whip finishes. Just pull it tight a little bit. Cut off the thread. And the final step, just apply some of your, some of your favorite head cement and let it dry. And that's it. That's how to tie a bloodworm larva. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please leave some comments down below and um, yeah, keep well from Into Fly Fishing. <laughs>